body, human body. Shakespeare once wrote in Othello, our bodies are our gardens to which our wills are gardeners. Within each of us lies an extraordinary universe, the human body, a masterpiece of natural engineering that Friedrich Nietzsche once described as a big sagacity, a plurality with one sense, a war and a peace, a flock and a shepherd. Every second, a symphony plays within us. The heart conducts its endless rhythm, as Bruce Holsinger observed, keeping time with the rhythms of the universe. Each beat, each breath, each cellular dance moves in perfect harmony when we choose to listen. Yet, in our modern rush, we often forget what Henry Miller so wisely noted. Our own physical body possesses a wisdom which we who inhabit the body lack. We give it orders which make no sense. We push beyond our limits, ignore the whispers of fatigue, dismiss the gentle warnings our body sends. Like a garden left untended, our health can wither under neglect. Shakespeare understood this when he wrote, Our bodies are our gardens, to which our wills are gardeners, so that if we will plant nettles, or sow lettuce, set hyssop and weed up thyme, the power and corrigible authority of this lies in our wills. Consider the wisdom of Augustus William Hare. The body ought to be the soul's best friend. Many good men, however, have neglected to make it such. So it has become a fiend and has plagued them. How often do we treat our closest friend as an enemy, pushing it beyond its limits, denying it rest, nourishment and care? Alexis Carell reminds us that Man thinks, invents, loves, suffers, admires, and prays with his brain and all his organs. We are not minds floating in space, but integrated beings. Where every cell, every tissue, every organ plays its part in the symphony of consciousness. As Arnold Bennett beautifully expressed, in the body and the instincts of the body, there should be no shame, but rather a frank, joyous pride. This temple we inhabit deserves our reverence, our attention, our care. Let nothing divert you from your duty to your body, urged Walt Whitman. These words written over a century ago ring even truer today. In an age of endless distractions and demanding schedules, we must remember that our health is not a luxury, but a sacred trust. Martin H. Fisher observed that hormones, vitamins, stimulants, and depressives are oils upon the creaky machinery of life. Principal item, however, is the machinery. We focus so often on quick fixes and temporary solutions, forgetting that the foundation must be strong for any structure to stand. The ancient Boston Courier warned, if we neglect the body, the body will have its revenge not as a threat, but as a natural law, as inevitable as gravity, as certain as the tides. Yet this same law works in our favor when we choose to nurture and respect our physical being. Jonathan Erla offers us hope. Everybody has inside them an ideal body, and you get to that ideal body by having an ideal lifestyle not through harsh restrictions or punishing regimens, but through understanding, respect, and consistent care. As Henry Stanley Haskins noted, spirit and flesh would have a hard time untangling if they were put to it. Perhaps they were never meant to be untangled at all. The body and mind dance as one, each supporting the other in an endless waltz of life. Remember the words of Frederick M. Rossiter. Every person who once comes to a clear perception of the true relation of body to mind and mind to body must ever after hold his health as sacred as their character. In the end, our bodies tell the story of our lives, not just in our scars and wrinkles, but in our vitality, our movement, our very presence in the world. The choice is always ours, to listen or to ignore, 
to nurture or to neglect, to honor or to dismiss this remarkable gift we've been given. For as Alexis Carell concluded, the integrity of the organism is indispensable to the manifestations of consciousness. We are not merely inhabitants of these bodies. We are these bodies in all their complexity, wisdom, and grace.